when you do it that way, you're going to build up in some areas and you will have a run. Runs are not fun. I didn't rhyme that on purpose. Welcome back to the community, everybody. And thank you all for being part of it. And I wanted to take out a moment and say thank you to all who's bought t-shirts, stickers, and made donations through PayPal. If you would like to, just pop down into the description to help the channel. Okay, I did make a promise a few weeks ago about the one rattle can, spray paint, tips and tricks, tutorial, etc., etc. Okay, I am not a body man expert. Okay, so that's a disclaimer, which I don't really care. Uh, I just show you what I do since I'm doing the Rust-Oleum rattle can with the 2K clear catalyst on the 68. All right, so we're going to go over a bunch of different things and. I will do some spray painting on a big flat board that I brought up the garage. I found in Heather's shed. Okay, let's get on it. Now I didn't forget about the complete cooling tin uh, installation video for the motor. Uh, like I stated, I would do. I'm time lapsing a lot of stuff in the background, and then that video will be out soon uh, because I've been soaking a lot of stuff, which is working good in a rust and then wire wheeling. I didn't paint the stuff yet. I will actually do that in an upcoming video. So hang tight. We will still do that video. A lot of the parts were rustier than I thought and some I didn't have. So hang in there. I didn't forget about that or anything else. Now, I'm not gonna touch base a lot on uh, body work itself, but one thing that I did wanna bring up is Bondo and Range, all right? Now, a lot of times, a lot of people are trying to just fill holes with Bondo and screen. Try not to do that if you can help it, really. Try to, you know, weld in some pieces. And if possible, if you have a hole, grind it clean. Uh, get a piece of metal that will overlap if you need to do this and go that route. And they sell glues now, two-part glues that... Uh, well, factories are using them now, body shops. Uh, this glue is as strong as weld from what I understand. So I might, I might should try that because I got one more patch to make on the beetle. I've been doing stuff in the background on body work so you don't have to be bored. And it's all time-lapsed in film too. So you can watch a big speeded up film in the end of some of the body work. But I'll spray in front of you at regular motion. Uh, the Bondos, there's different kinds. As you know, we have the Bondo Glass. Okay, we have the fiberglass resin jelly, I call it, and that there is the kind you use that mesh. It's like a cloth mesh, and I've also used it with the glass. Uh, that, this is like the old tagger hair, uh, I believe, like has the long strands of hair in it, you know, so that uh, works pretty well, you know, for uh, some more major destruction to take care of. Now... Here's a step above Bondo. I love Rage. Now you can buy Rage Gold and it's a step above Rage, okay? Now I've only used the Rage, but it goes on better than Bondo. It doesn't leave the little pinholes everywhere like the air pockets. And also it sands really nice compared to Bondo where you're like exhausted trying to sand it down. It's almost like sanding down concrete sometimes. Uh, Rage sands very smooth, very, very smooth. Now the Rage Gold, and I don't have a can of that on hand, uh, it actually even is nicer. So I'm gonna get a can of that for some of the finish work I wanna do. Uh, one more thing, we're gonna get onto the paint. I was just showing a few things, is the metal reinforced filler by Bondo. Now, like I said, I'm not a body man. Uh, like my buddy Duke, uh, oh, I'm excited about his car. The Duke, he is a body man. Uh, Metal reinforced Bondo, I did use this. I was actually quite impressed with it. Now it's not quite as easy to sand. It's got, I guess, metal strands. I don't know, I didn't do the research on it, but I watched a couple of videos and read up and used it and I really liked it. Now this is not a finishing type of product. This, is, this stuff's pretty brutal, it's metal reinforced. So one of the most important things that you're going to want to do is ventilation. We don't have paint booths, a lot of us, probably 
2% of you do, maybe 10%. But you want the ventilation. You do not want this stuff in your lungs, in your skin, in your eyes. Uh, you don't want that, okay? So here's the thing. If you have a garage door, prop it open, you know, about yo far, cardboard on it with a fan in the middle pulling out for the fallout that comes down. Also, you can get a cheap fan, like I did, put it in a window with it pulling out. So a lot of them fumes are leaving the garage, all right? You can also take a furnace filter. You know the cheap blue ones? Or maybe they're green. But you can take them and tape them to the fan. So when you're pulling the paint and the fumes out, cumulates out the window and out your garage door at the bottom, you're not putting overspray on your neighbor's car. <laughs> That could be a bad Next, thing. Make sure you use the proper masks. Okay. So you'll want to. Now I use these for, and I don't know if that's at N95 or whatever heck they are. I'm not a mask expert by the numbers. Has this little vent in the front. These are pretty good for sanding. Now I'm not telling you to don't use something better because you should, but I use these for sanding, is what I do. So son just bought me this for Christmas. I didn't put the cartridges on yet. But it's a, it's a 3M one. And of course it needs all, you know, put together. And it takes the cartridges. It looks like this. And these work very nice also. Here's something else. And some of you may like them. Some of you may not. Uh, when you're using your finger on the rattle can, okay, because we're going to start getting into the paint now. Uh, when you're using your finger on the nozzle, that can get tough, especially if you're spraying a car or a fender, what have you. Yeah, after a while, your, your little booger finger there, that can get sore after a while. So I like these, okay? Snaps right onto the top, and I'll show you when I spray her shortly. And you can go ahead and here's what they look like in the front. I mean, it clips right on, it slides on, and I'll show you briefly when I go to start spraying in a moment. It slides on, and when you squeeze this trigger, it pushes the nozzle down. So it goes That sounded real, huh? And these work well. It's like almost like holding a gun and spraying back and forth. So these will make it a lot easier on you. You just got to get used to using them is what it is. I forgot to get it out of the cabinet. You know what masking tape looks like. When you're using masking tape, don't stop at Dollar General or the Dollar Tree to buy masking tape. I've done that. Don't you do it. Uh, use a good quality masking tape. Heat gun. A uh, heat gun is very nice. You can use a hair dryer. These are just a little more aggressive. Uh, my daughter had bought me this, I believe, for last Christmas. It goes up to 1,200 degrees. This thing is brutal hot out of the end, so you got to be careful. Heat guns are great. When you want to heat up the metal, and make it nice and warm that you're spraying, or if you want to warm your can up, just don't go crazy and pop the can. Uh, heat gun or a hair dryer, I just prefer the heat gun because it's a little faster. Uh, at least this is adjustable temperature wise, which really is a, a big deal. But when you're heating up that metal nice and warm, and you've seen me do it before when I'm spraying things in the garage, like I will be doing with the uh, cooling tin video, you're going to see me using a, a heat gun a lot. It's a very nice addition. And if you need to coat to dry a little bit quicker, don't get up on it like a blowtorch. Just stay back, you know, eight, 10 inches and just fog back and forth to warm the paint up if you need to do that. I got these on Amazon, but you can get them in numerous places. Uh, to put your body filler on. I didn't clean this one when I was done real good. <laughs> and it's nicer because you don't want to use cardboard. You can use plexiglass, but these are relatively cheap and they clean up when you clean them. Uh, fairly easy and they're cheap and it just cracks and pulls the body filler back off. So I forgot to bring that up. Also, sanding blocks. Okay. When you're doing the body work, you don't want your rumple to your fingers. I don't know if rumple is a word, but it is now to go and get uneven when you're sanding. Use a sanding block or they sell Dora block, which they're actually pretty nice to get a nice even sanding, okay? And I shouldn't have went that direction, but it's something I did want to bring up. Back to spraying. I know, I, I got confused there. Wear eye protection. Everything gets in through your eyes, not just your mouth and your nose. But especially when you're using the 2K clear with the hardener we're talking about, 
put it on. Cover your eyes. Trust me on that. A couple different Rust-Oleums here. But Rust-Oleum, before I get started on actually painting, Rust-Oleum does make a turbo spray. And it's supposed to spray four times the amount, or I'm sorry, four times faster to get the job done. I don't believe in rushing jobs, but I will say their turbo spray, I want to try it. I'll grab a can on a mount next time and do a short on it or something. But the pattern is crazy. It's like it's six inches away. It's like seven and a half inches wide of a spray. So you can coat something pretty fast, especially if you're just doing a quick paint job on something. So they do have that available. I didn't try it yet, but I watched some people using it and it's, and it's actually very interesting. Now, what you're going to want to do is make sure the area is cleaned up before you start spraying your paint. Now you can use a uh, spray away foam glass cleaner, but make sure it's the water-based, okay? They have this at Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, wherever, a lot of places. Use this and you'll be very happy you did. And there is your glass cleaner ammonia free and you definitely want water-based and there you have it also you can use a wax and grease remover i don't have any in front of me right now but use your own judgment on that just wax and grease remover and also isopropyl alcohol isopropyl i have a hard time with that word sometimes we do use that as you can see here and there is isopropyl alcohol that's 91%. Some I see are 70%. And that will also remove static along with contaminants and dirt. I like using that. I use that on a lot of parts before I'm going to paint. And I forgot to get it out of the cabinet, but you know what a tack rag is. Make sure to use a tack cloth before you paint, please. It gets all the poopy off of there before you're going to spray. Now, something else you're going to want to do before we start spraying and going over to paint thing here. I know, I'm talking too much. Get used to it. Uh, use a bucket or some type of container. Don't put scalding hot water in it. Put warm water in it. Something that you could put your hand in comfortably and leave it in there, but feels good. Go by that, okay? But the point is, you want to warm your can up before you paint. Blink, you want it in there. Get it nice and warm. Because when you do that, it actually sprays smoother. You don't get the cold spatter, you know, where it starts spitting because the paint's too cold, not atomized. So you do want to put it in warm water for at least 10 minutes. Because depending on how cold it is out and your cans are in your garage, that paint's going to be cold. So warm it up in the water and it will spray so much smoother. Acetone. Why do I have acetone here? Acetone is a good cleaning agent. A lot of people clean their guns with it, uh, spray guns, uh, HVLP, LVLP. But you can clean parts with them too. Where I'm going with this is if you have, and you popped it open, you shook, you did the warm water trick, nothing comes out. I'm good at that spray thing noise like that. Now, if the tip is clogged, I should say your nozzle, pull it off. I'll pay attention here before you just go off like a cowboy doing it. Take a little glass jar, not plastic, and then take your plastic nozzle, put it in your little baby food jar, little glass jar, pour acetone in it. Now, here's the important part. Pay attention. If you fast forwarded through this, that's your own problem. The acetone will dissolve the paint inside the plastic nozzle, and then you can blow it out with some air or rinse it under water and it should be clear. If in fact you left it in longer than 25, 30 seconds, it's going to start melting the plastic nozzle to your paint can. And then you're gonna be all bummed out. If you're gonna use acetone to clean the nozzles, no more than 25 to 30 seconds. Acetone melts plastic fast, but it does work. So we have a couple different paints here. And this one, I bought a couple cans of these for like a buck at Walmart. Now, not for spraying the car or anything. Don't use this stuff. Uh, Rust-Oleum, I like their two-in-one filler and sandable primer. And they also sell etching primer for going over metal. Uh, they sell adhesion promoter, stuff like that, sticky so that, you know, the paint sticks better. Uh, this is the two-in-one filler and sandable primer. 
I do like this. It sprays very nice. It goes on good and it sands nice. So that's something that maybe you need to know. Also, we have their automotive primer. I have used it. I have no issues with it. It does work well. And we'll be spraying in a minute. Calm down. Uh, it does work very nice, in all honesty, for something out of a spray can. Uh, this is the color I'm painting the beetle is Colonial Red. I forgot the other color. The other color is Gloss Almond because it's going to be two-toned. So that's the two-tone that it's going to be. I think it'll look pretty nice. Uh, these are the ones that I'm going to use with the 2K Clear over them. And I think it'll look very nice. It's Weld Through Primer. Now this Spray Max, this is a 1K. This is the one I was talking about, the same brand. And it's made by Spray Max. And the one that we will be using, I don't have it on hand today, but it would be the 2K uh, Clear Spray Max. And it'll have a red nozzle on the top, a red cap, I'm sorry. And it goes into the bottom, and I'll explain that momentarily. I just have a piece of Lawan set up to show you some spray patterns and different things like that and why it matters and different things to do with shading. Uh, make sure your garage or whatever you're spraying in, don't spray in the house, is at least 70 degrees. That's like an optimal temperature. I'm not a paint man like in a body shop, so I don't know what they keep our booths at. But I imagine it's around 70, 72 degrees. If it's too cold or if it's too hot, you're going to have issues. Make sure it's not raining out if you don't have a paint booth because you're going to have a lot of moisture in the air and humidity possibly. And you will have issues there. Yeah, you need the perfect environment. Okay, let's do a little bit of spraying. I'm going to show you a couple things. All right. Got our paint ready. We're going to slip that in there. Okay. Make sure you even it out. And that's your spray gun. I'm not spraying it at the camera. That's not happening. Now, I got a little fictitious here. This is the ends of the panel we'd be spraying, the metal panel, okay? That's why I put arrows there. And I did that for a reason. You'll see why in a second. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do light coats back and forth, the mist coat. Now, this is Lawan. I think my Rottweiler was walking on this. <laughs> this is Lawan. This isn't metal, but I'm just trying to show you spray techniques. Now, when you're doing it, and I do have my fan on, hopefully, you have it on noise background cancellation. Hopefully, then the fan's not drowning me out. Uh, you're not going to go too fast. If you go too fast, you're not going to get enough paint down. So let's try this first. I'll show you. I already put it in the warm water, so the can's all warmed up. All right. You're going to let off the gun each time you get to the outer side of the panel. Now I'm going to do something on purpose. Now, you start seeing zebra striping or tiger stripes. You're not doing the proper coverage. When you're covering, you should do 50% of the next pass. So let's pretend the path is six inches, okay? So say that's six inches, which it's not. You're gonna spray starting there. You're gonna cover 50% of the path every time. So what you have now is a nice coverage. Wow. That is a nice coverage. You want light coats is what you want. So when you do light coats, just wait and you'll have, say, masking tape here. Then you can touch it in about 10 minutes and see if it's just lightly tacky. Now this is wood, so it's sucking it right in. You want to touch it. If it's tacky, you're ready to rock and roll with your second coat. If it's not tacky and it starts to pull it a little, you're going to have to wait. Now, something I'm going to show you, you got to be careful you don't do, is what they call like a dumbbell effect, where there's balls on each side. And I'll show you what I mean. If, in fact, you don't let off at, like, say this is the door right here, and there's nothing here, that's the edges. If you don't let off when you're spraying and you hold on it and go back and forth, oh. 
we have build up here and this is a little wider here it's probably not the best example but you get what i mean this will be the second coat make sure you let off the gun here and let off here this is your door those lines I'm going to show you something in a second about shading, but first, don't change directions on your paint. And what I mean by that is you're going back and forth like this. Don't start going like this or like that, trying to get it in. When you do it that way, you're going to build up in some areas and you will have a run. Runs are not fun. I didn't rhyme that on purpose. Now, what you're going to do with this style, and first of all, read the directions. That always helps. And if you're a guy, guys don't read directions, but you should. When you're spraying, you do your first coat like you've seen me do, where I misted that coat on. It may not look it on wood, but I did. Wait about 10 minutes. Check outside of your panel. Don't touch the panel. Touch the masking tape for tackiness. 10 minutes later, approximately, depending on the humidity and temperature, then you're going to go ahead and get tambourine. And you're going to spray your second coat. 10 minutes later, approximately, you'll have to test by touching the masking tape and do your third coat, and you'll have good coverage. I will say, these are nice. I'm not saying don't use your finger. If it makes you happy, go ahead. But these handles are really, really nice. They make a huge difference. Okay. Okay. So I had a minor screw up. I lost some filming. Uh, if you caught earlier on in the video, I did say I'm going to show you shading. Uh, if you are working on something and say uh, your car is white or cream colored, and you put a fender on and it's black. When you start spraying the red on, we use red for reference, and all of a sudden the fender is a darker red, the body's a lighter red. Whatever your base coat is underneath, even with rattle can, if the color is white and you're spraying your red over, it's going to be a brighter white. Say you're using sunrise red, it's going to be lighter. If you're using sunrise red and you went over some different color primer or a dark fender, then you're going to have a darker red, even though it's the same red paint. I hope that makes sense. I lost footage in the garage, and I do apologize for that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about clear coats, all right? And clear coating must be done the proper way, or you're going to spill gas on it, or anything can happen, and off comes the paint, all right? So what we have here is... This is Duplicolor's clear coat finish. Now, this is not catalyst in it, uh, hardener, so to speak. Uh, it is just a very thinned out clear in a can. I'm not a real big fan of this, but maybe if you're spraying like your guitar or uh, something like small that you're doing, but you wouldn't want to start coating a whole fender in this. Uh, we also have the Gloss Clear Ultra Cover by Rust-Oleum. This is all thinned very much also inside the can. And that's how they make this so they can put it in a can. There's no hardener in this and there's no hardener that will mix up in it. Now, the Spray Max, now this is a 1K primer. Don't pay attention to that. Look at the photo here. I did order two cans and it didn't make it yet, but you get the point. On top of the 2K Clear Spray Max, you will have a red tip. You pull it off, you put it in the bottom, smack it, and it releases the hardener, so to speak. It's an activator. Shake it up really good. Do the same thing, warm these cans up, and shake it up real good, and it mixes the two contents together. And what that does is put hardener in, 
just like you're spraying from a gun, all right? It's, it's the same as a gun, it's just a different delivery method. But it's gonna but, harden just like clear mixed with reducer and hardener, you know, in a gun. Now, once you mix them together, the shelf life is about 48 hours, and I never wait until they extended. That means for me, it's good for 30 hours. You're gonna see something on the cans with the uh, Spray Max, the 2K Clear. You're gonna see a date. Now, when you see that date, that is not an expiration date. So don't go to the store and come home and call them and say, my can expired. That's not what that means. That's a, a date of, uh, my brain stopped working. That's a build date on the can in the clear. <laughs> the build date is good from three years from the date on the can. It's not an expiration date. I just want to repeat it one more time. I know that irritates How many coats of clear? with the hardener, the 2K Clear. We'll put this here, we'll act like that's the 2K Clear. How many coats? Three to four. I like spraying four. Uh, the reason is, is you're gonna start color sanding or whatever you refer to it as, and then buffing. You're probably gonna cut two coats of that off right away, so you at least want two coats left. Of the clear coat to protect, of course. So I would recommend that. How much will each can do of the good quality 2K Spray Max with the activator? usually about six to eight square feet if you're spraying it properly. Sure, you can spray 20, get 20 square feet, but you aren't gonna have enough on there and you're gonna sand right into your paint. So plan on usually with uh, 2K clear, usually around six to eight square feet. And that should be a pretty good coverage and that should be around three to four coats. How long between each coat of clear? Good question. You're looking at about between five and 10 minutes between coats. And like I said with the paint, when you're doing that, touch it with your glove, not your fingers. Touch it with your glove. If it's a little tacky, you're ready for your next coat. And then you'll go clear up to four coats. If you touch it and you're starting to pull the clear away, it's not ready yet. Okay, so how long to wait with the 2K Clear Max before sanding, wet sanding, and buffing. Uh, one thing I do recommend is to use a 1500 wet paper. It'll say P is in Paul, P1500. You'll see it's a black sandpaper like this, and you're going to wet sand. Keep it plenty of wet. Uh, what I like to do, honestly, is I like to use 2000. I don't like to cut too much off. Remember, you're not in a hurry when it comes to body work. No, I'm not a body man, but you don't want to hurry up because if you do that, you're going to have a really bad outcome. Uh, use 1500 if need be, cut and buff. Uh, keep it wet. I like to use 2000, but that's me. I just take my time and move slower and it just comes out so much nicer. Don't use anything below 1500. All right, as you know, I am doing the cooling tin restoration. And that the reason that I'm doing these other videos now is because it gives me a time to strip rust down and do everything like that. And I'm gonna integrate that all together into one video. It's weeks worth of stupidity work pushed into one 20 minute film. So sometimes it has to happen that way. Uh, we'll spray the tins together, let them dry. That'll be in one video with everything else. And then the video when I'm installing the complete cooling tin and the thermostat on the motor, that'll be one full video. That one might be a little longer, about 40 minutes. I know some of you get ADHD and can't handle that, but that's the best I can do. And there should be another car coming here uh, because the ones that I had were just too far rotted out. But the one that's coming here, you've already seen it. Thanks for being here. I hope everybody had a great Easter. I hope it was pleasant if you celebrate Easter. Stay safe, healthy, and happy. And thanks for being here.